Hello viewers, so welcome to my channel. I'm Hashem Ali Khan. Now I'm going to start the problems on two-way ANOVA. Last two, three videos I have prepared on one-way ANOVA, one-way classification. It will not be specified in the problem that the problem is of one-way or two-way. You have to identify yourself. If it is asking you the difference of only one factor, then it is one-way ANOVA. If it is asking for two factors, it is two-way ANOVA. So here so far we have considered only one factor, so one-way ANOVA. Now we are having two factors to be considered. Then we apply two-way ANOVA. So see the problem number five. So before starting the problem, I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which I have given in the link under my description. So always keep ready the problem before watching this video. Now take a screenshot of the solution of this fifth problem. Then I'll explain each and every point. Come on, see the fifth one. The following data represent the number of units of a commodity produced by three different workers using three different types of machines. So we are given the workers in rows X, Y, Z, three workers in rows and three machines are there A, B, C in columns. So machines in columns and workers in rows, three machines and three workers. Now last line, test A point, whether the mean productivity is the same for different types of machines and B, whether the three workers differ with respect to mean productivity. So it is asking you to check two things. First, whether the productivity is significantly different among the machines. Secondly, whether the mean productivity is different among the different workers. That's why it is a two-way ANOVA. We are considering two factors, one machines, another workers. We want, we want to find out the differences between machines and differences between workers. So clearly it is a problem of two-way ANOVA, two-way classification. This indicates in this problem that we have to apply two-way ANOVA. Now the productivity is given, production is given, how many units each worker has produced. Worker X has produced 16, 64, 40. Y worker has produced 56, 72, 56. Z worker has produced 12, 56, 28. Whereas machines. A machine produced 16, 56, 12. B machine 64, 72, 56. And C worker produced 40, 56, 28. That's it. Now how to proceed to calculate the ANOVA? Now see carefully. Because the diff uh, uh, this problem is entirely different compared to the previous problem, one way ANOVA. So how to proceed? See, calculations for two-way ANOVA. In the rows, I have taken workers X, Y, Z. Three workers are given in the problem. X, Y, Z. For R convenience, I am putting it as R1, R2, R3. R stand for rows. R1, first row. R2, second row. R3, third row. Similarly, in columns, we have taken machines. In the problem, machines are given A, B, C. For our convenience, I am writing it down C1, C2, C3. So, so that you can identify C1 first column, C2 second column, C3 third column. So three columns and three rows. The columns are C1, C2, C3 and the rows are R1, R2, R3. Forget about the machine names and worker names. X, Y, Z and A, B, C, you forget it. Remember C1, C2, C3 and R1, R2, R3. So whatever data is given in the problem, same data I have copied. 16, 56, 12. 16, 56, 12. Second, 64, 72, 56. 40, 56, 28. Same values, whatever is given in the problem, I have taken. Now I need the totals. I am not squaring. In the one way ANOVA, I have squared the values. Here in two-way ANOVA, I'm not squaring. I'm keeping it as it is. 
Now take the total C1. Total is summation C1 is 84. Summation C2 192. Summation C3 124. Summation R1. Take the total of R1. 16, 64, 40, 120, summation R1, summation R2, summation R3, 96. Now cross check the total of rows and the total of columns must be same. Now if you add up 120 plus 184 plus 96, you get 400. Similarly row wise 84 plus 192 plus 124, you will get 400. So row total and column total must be equal. So T is equal to 400. The total of all the items in all the samples. The total of all the items in all the samples. T is equal to 400. Now correction factor. Correction factor CF. T whole square by N. How much is T? 400. So 400 whole square divided by N. N stands for number of items in all the samples. So totally 9 values are there. 3 rows and 3 columns So 9 values 400 square divided by 9 17,777.78 This is the correction factor Now we need total sum of squares of all the items in all the samples Total sum of squares in all the items in all the samples Now see here These are all the values I am squaring all the values. Squaring all the values. So 16 square plus 56 square plus 12 square. You can see here. 16 square plus 56 square plus 12 square. Similarly 64 square, 72 square, 56 square. 64, 72, 56. 40 square, 56 square, 28 square. 40 square, 56 square, 28 square. Minus correction factor. Correction factor already we have taken. Previous one way ANOVA, we have squared the values in the table itself. But here we should not square the values in table. We have to square separately. We have to square separately. So the total comes to 3694.22. This is the SST. Sum of squares of all the items. Total sum of squares of all the items in all the samples minus correction factor remember you should not only square but also you should deduct correction factor SST over. now SSC sum of squares between columns C stands for columns sum of squares between columns in columns what we are having machines columns we are having machines so SSC the formula is summation C1 whole square by N1 plus summation C2 whole square by N2 plus summation C3 whole square by N3 minus CF. So summation C1, C2, C3 is here. 84 whole square divided by N1. N1 means how many items are there? 3 items. So 84 whole square divided by 3. 192 whole square divided by 3. 124 whole square divided by 3. Minus correction factor 17,777.78. So we got SSC 1987.55. Next, SSR. Sum of squares between rows. This is the new point. We don't have this in the previous one way ANOVA. In two way ANOVA, we are having sum of squares between samples, rows. SSR. The formula is very much similar to SSC. Summation R1 whole square by N1 plus summation R2 whole square by N2 plus summation R3 whole square by N3 minus CF. Summation R1, R2, R3 here you have 120 whole square divided by N1. N1 stands for how many items are there in the first row. In the first row three items 1, 2, 3. Second row three items, third row three items. So N13, N23, N33. So here 120 whole square divided by 3, 184 whole square divided by 3, 96 whole square divided by 3 minus CF 17,777.7. So if you square it and divide, we'll get this value. So SSR 1379.55. 
तो थ्री वैल्यूज वी गॉड एस एस टी एस एस सी एस एस आर न लास्ट वन सम ऑफ स्क्वेर विद इन द सैंपल्स दट इज कॉल्ड एर एस एस ई तो एस एस ई इज इक्वल टू एस एस टी माइनस एस एस सी माइनस एस एस आर तो एस एस टी इज हाउ मच थ्री सिक्स नाइन फोर पॉइंट टू टू माइनस वन नाइन एट सेवन पॉइंट फाइव फाइव माइनस वन थ्री सेवन नाइन पॉइंट फाइव फाइव तो एस एस ई वी गॉट थ्री ट्वेंटी सेवन पॉइंट वन टू दैट्स ऑल ऑल द कैलकुलेशन कंप्लीटेड तो रिमेंबर फर्स्ट यू मेक द टेबल नेक्स्ट करेक्शन फैक्टर नेक्स्ट एस एस टी एस एस सी एस एस आर एंड एस एस ई दैट्स ऑल ऑल कैलकुलेशन ऑल नाउ वी आर रेडी टू प्रिपेयर टू वे एनोवा टेबल द टू वे एनोवा टेबल इज वेरी मच सिमिलर टू वन वे एनोवा टेबल द ओनली डिफरेंस इज वन एक्स्ट्रा रो विल बी एटेड source of variation sum of squares degree of freedom mean squares f ratio columns are same no change first between columns between columns means ssc so ssc is equal to 1987.55 and degree of freedom is c minus 1 column minus 1 how many columns do we have three columns so 3 minus 1 2 msc is equal to ssc divided by degree of freedom 1987.55 divided by 2 we'll get 993.775 that is msc now between rows this is the new row this row we don't have in one way classification one way classification only two rows are there that is between columns and within samples only two rows but two way classification we have three rows between columns between rows and within samples so between rows ssr how much is ssr 1379.55 degree of freedom r minus 1 rows minus 1 how many rows are there three rows 3 minus 1 2 so msr is equal to ssr divided by degree of freedom that is 1379.55 divided by 2 689.775 That's it. Last row within samples or error. That is S S E. Already we got S S E here. Three twenty seven point one. Now the degree of freedom for S S E is C minus one into R minus one. This is the new point. Remember this. C minus one into R minus one. Column minus one into row minus one. Three minus one into three minus one. 3 minus 1 is 2 2 into 2 4 so 4 is the degree of freedom for sse now ss uh, mse mse is equal to sse divided by degree of freedom 327.12 divided by 4 81.78 now we are ready to compute the value of f two f values we have to compute one computed value of f for columns and the other computed value of f for rows to so fc <coughs> f computed value for columns msc divided by mse msc how much 993.775 mse how much 81.78 so 993.775 divided by 81.78 you will get 12.15 this is the computed value of f for columns for columns columns means machines similarly we need f computed value for rows fr msr divided by mse how much is msr here 689.775 divided by 81.78 we'll get 8.43 is the computed value of r computed value of f for rows in rows we are having workers so for workers it is 8.43 for machine it is 12.15 that's all in the coming problems we are going to make the same table exactly same only figures will change the complete structure of the table will remain same for two way and row now we'll follow the steps of hypothesis testing first step laying down of hypothesis now hypothesis 
two null hypothesis and two alternative hypothesis we have to frame. Null hypothesis for columns. Columns we have machines. The main the mean productivity for machines A, B, C are same. No significant difference. There is no significant difference in the average productivity of the machines columns. Next, the mean rows. The mean productivity for workers X, Y, and Z are same. No significant difference. So we are making two null hypotheses. One null hypothesis for machines and the other null hypothesis for workers. <coughs> no significant difference in productivity among the machines and no significant difference in productivity among the workers. Alternative hypothesis opposite. There is significant difference in mean productivity among the machines. And secondly, there is significant difference in mean productivity among the workers. That's it. Now, and already we have framed. Now, level of significance alpha 0 0.05 assumed. It is not given in the problem. So we can write alpha 0 0.05 assumed. Degree of freedom. Now, for columns and rows separately, we have to find out degree of freedom. For columns, numerator degree of freedom is 2 and denominator degree of freedom is 4 because denominator we have taken MSC. For MSC degree of freedom is 4. For MSC degree of freedom is 2. So V1 is equal to 2, V2 is equal to 4. This is for columns. For rows, for rows, so here the degree of freedom for MSR is 2 and denominator degree of freedom is 4. So 2 and 4. So V1 is equal to 2, V2 is equal to 4. So for both, for both columns and rows, we have the same degree of freedom. V1, 2 and V2, 4. Here also V1, 2, V2, 4. Now critical region. We have to refer the F table to find out the critical value of F at 5% level. For V1 is equal to 2 and V2 is equal to 4. I have already given a PDF of this F table in the description under my link link under my description so keep a copy of this uh, table value ready now 5% points there are two values 1% and 5% refer 5% values v1 is equal to 2 v2 is equal to 4 v1 is given in columns numerator and v2 is given in rows so under 2 against 4 under 2 against 4 you can see here 6.94 so 6.94 is the critical value of f the table value of f at 5 percent level for v1 is equal to 2 v2 is equal to 4 is 6.94 the critical region lies for f greater than or equal to 6.94 any value which is more than 6.94 will go in rejection region to make the concept clear, I have drawn a curve here. So right side, this shaded area is the rejection region which starts from 6.94. From 6.94, the area is rejection. Below 6.94, it is acceptance. Now we have to compare the computed value. Our computed value is 12.15 and 8.93. It's completely obvious. Both the computed values are falling in the rejection region. Both are greater than 6.94. So computed value falls in rejection region. We reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis. That means there is significant difference in the mean productivity among the machines. And also there is significant difference of mean productivity among the workers. Ultimate conclusion. The computed value of F for columns 12.15 and for rows 8.43 are greater than the critical value 6.94. So both will fall in rejection region. Null hypothesis are rejected. There is significant difference in the mean productivity between the different machines and there is significant difference in mean productivity among the different workers that's it this is the very first problem on two way and one inshallah i'll continue the next problem in the next video